Please enjoy the prologue to Reynard. The storm raged outside, bending trees and whipping them back and forth, causing them to toss water against the window with the force of a fireman's hose. A single gust of wind tossed Mrs. Farrell, his neighbor, minivans from one side of the street to the other. Max thought he heard the frightening sounds of their house being ripped from its foundation. He quickly turned on the TV to hear the weather report before the electricity went out, because it always goes out in storms. He heard Connie Chu, the Channel 7 weather girl, call the weather event a cyclone. She also said, a cyclone has never been reported in this city, ever. And in a very chilling voice, she said the city was not prepared to deal with this kind of event. And quite frankly, the last time she seen weather like this, was in the fucking movie, The Mist. Right after Connie made that statement, the channel went blank and was followed by white screen and a scratchy sound. He had never not seen the TV on and couldn't make out what he was seeing. Max looked over toward the darkness that engulfed the small area just under his staircase. At 10 years old, he had Reynard, the demon of mischief and death, trapped. It was by accident. He was playing with a talisman his dad had given him before his dad died and a mysterious sinkhole event two years ago. End of prologue. Six months after his dad's mysterious death, he still didn't have any answers at least none he believed. It felt like his dad was still alive. But today, he was excited about getting home early from school. It was Friday and the last day of school until Tuesday. Monday was a federal holiday, and that was okay with him. Following the same routine, talked with his mom briefly about school and answered all her mom questions, rushed downstairs to check on his six boxes of toys. Once downstairs, he immediately noticed that one of the boxes was missing. It couldn't be misplaced, he wouldn't do that. Then it hit him, today is the first Friday of the month. Tomorrow is the flea market at St. Mary's St. Hall of 17th and Maple Avenue. Max ran up the stairs so fast, barely touching every third step. Mom, where are my box of toys? She heard the sound of sadness and bewilderment in Max's voice. At that moment, she felt that she had made a mistake. I put some of your toys in my surprise kit. Surprise kit is what she called items enclosed in a box, which the buyer couldn't see until they had purchased the box. People bought surprise kits on blind faith. She would mark the box toys old or books, 9th century or oddities, etc., Cynthia Murphy knew that her son wasn't your average 10-year-old kid. He had scored higher on his IQ test than 99% of the kids in his gifted school. He would have scored higher but missed a question on purpose. He didn't want to have his name on the board outside the dean's office. Being the best is okay, letting someone else take the heat for it is even better. Max, I thought I would sell some of these old items and use the money to buy you something new. She pulled some items from the box, tossed them in the air, and caught them before throwing them back into the box. You don't even know what half of this stuff is, said Cynthia. Max assured her that he didn't know what most of those toys were or if they were toys at all. But if Dad bought them and gave them to me, he, Max, should determine the outcome of those toys and oddities. Who could fight with a ten-year-old and one with this kind of brain? She apologized for not asking him first and gave him back the shoeboxes full of items. Downstairs had all the setups of a one-bedroom apartment, a bathroom that connected to his bedroom, a large open room with a TV, sofa, game console, a small kitchen and extra closet space. And the best part of it all, his mom was seconds away to fix him something to eat. Max kicked back on the sofa and started reading a book on Roman history. The book was written in 11 AD by the personal transcriber to Gaius Julius Caesar, better known as Caligula, who governed through 31 August 12th to 24th AD. This very ancient book was another gift from his dad. Max understood the rarity of all the books his father passed down to him. Some of these books 
were only rumored to be in existence. His father had given Max a book written in blood from a dark angel. The book was locked in his safety box along with the original painting of Jesus. He was told not to read that book until he was in his twenties. The dark angel who had written it was captured during the Philadelphia yellow fever outbreak of 1793. He wrote that book in his own blood. A talisman of a wolf and snakehead was used to bind him. He remained imprisoned for over a hundred years. Cynthia fought the wind just to close her front door. It felt like someone was pushing against her, trying to keep the door open. Then suddenly she shut the door with so much force that it scared the living bejesus out of her. It was like someone on the other side of the door just gave up and all that was left was her force pushing in one direction. Three minutes later, there was a hard knock at the door. She looked out of her window, and it was her neighbor Liz. She was drenched and only wearing a short white sleeveless blouse and Bermuda shorts. When she opened the door, rain and wind whisked through the front of the house, soaking everything in its path. Liz was hysterical. Cynthia could only make out a few words. She repeated what she thought she had heard Liz say. Someone is trying to kill you. What honey it's who? Rick, your husband, Rick. Cynthia turned to grab a dry towel for her friend and bounced off Rick's long stiff frame, standing directly behind her. In all the confusion, she had forgotten to lock her door. She was now standing side by side with Liz. She moved Liz behind her. Hold on now, what's all this about? Said Cynthia. Liz, who was hysterical, now was on her knees, directly behind Cynthia, crying and pulling on the back of Cynthia's Chicago White Sox t-shirt. Rick was holding a machete still dripping with blood and rain. Her kitchen floor looked like the ending scene in Scream 5. Blood was pouring from her neighbor's open cut. Cynthia looked into Rick's eyes and frantic thoughts for Max's safety rushed through every fiber of her body. At that moment, Cynthia was ready to kill to protect her son. Rick moved toward Cynthia. She moved toward him quickly and caught him off guard enough to push him over the kitchen table. Before he was able to get to his feet, she had grabbed the Glock under the end table in the front room. I have called the police, they are on their way said Cynthia. Rick shook his head in disagreement. No, Cynthia, you didn't call the police. And you're not going to shoot me. You have been standing in this kitchen for the past five minutes, listening to the hysteria of a fool, my wife. Now, I'm sorry that Liz had to drag you into this, but here you are. What doesn't have to happen is that Max gets hurt. If he stays downstairs in his little dreamland, he will be okay. But the sad part is that you are a witness, and now Max will have to go on without both parents. Liz had passed out on the floor and was bleeding from three open cuts. Cynthia pulled back the hammer on her Glock. She looked Rick in the face, you motherfucker. You move one muscle, and when the police get here, they will have to scrape your face off my fucking walls. As sure as I am a black woman, you can count on that. Downstairs, Max was lining his toys up for another great battle. He was preparing his soldiers for a fight to save humanity. Resurrection for every soldier who dies on the battlefield. He looked for a symbol to represent each army. He turned over the box of symbols that his dad had given him. One carving looked cool. It was that of a wolf and snakehead. The rain was crashing against every window in the home, but to Max, the weather was calm. When he held the symbol in his hand, his ears popped like he was rising upward fast. The sounds of the TV, radio, rain and thunder had been sucked into a vortex of dead silence. The room was devoid of sound. He started to scream for his mother. He screamed as loud as he could, but was not able to hear his own voice. He looked over at the full-length mirror in the corner of the room and could see his mouth, wide open. 
Max tossed the talisman in the air, like his mother had done earlier today. But this time, the talisman hovered in midair. Max watched with amazement. Suddenly it hit the corner wall, just below the stairs. The sound was back. The TV peppered the air with noises of bells and whistles from what sounded like the price is right. The radio host was signing off, this is Lakshmi Singh of NPR. The wall began to darken just in that space. Max thought that was cool. He could walk into that black spot and hide from his mother. Everything was playing much louder too. The room started to spin. He passed out only to wake up surrounded by eight of his toys. All the soldiers stood life-size. The odd toys stood taller than the rest and muscular. He wasn't alarmed, he felt safe around them. A voice called out to him. Hey, Max, what's up buddy? Can you do me a favor and take that ugly round wolf head off the wall? Sorry, wolf and snakehead said a voice from the dark place in the corner wall under the staircase. Who are you and how did you get in the corner of my basement? Asked Max, it isn't important why I'm in this corner, son. That's not important now, the only thing that matters is that I get upstairs to save your mom. Max stood there for a minute in silence. Hey, did you hear what I said? I need to get upstairs to save your mom. Max was thinking, he wasn't one to rush and move with fear or emotion. His dad had told him never to react like that. Hey mister, don't worry, I will go upstairs and check on my mom, be right back. The voice in the dark deepened, hey Max, I said let me out of this fucking corner. Release me, release me, release me. Max continued up the stairs to check on his mom. He could hear the mixer turning. That meant that his mom was making frozen margaritas. When he got to the end of the stairs, he slowly opened the door and peered around the kitchen. It was all clear, nothing to see. He walked through the kitchen, where he could see his mother, drinking a margarita and watching TV. All the curtains were open, and the light of the moon shined through the entire front room. It was kind of beautiful. A special report was on, so he moved closer to hear. This is Dan Westwood and Michelle McBride report on a bizarre turn of events just unfolding. The House of Representatives had just announced that they would be dissembling in the next week and giving control to the Senate. In their announcement, they stated a lack of leadership to help the people. House of Representatives also cited too much power by special interest and that a Senate and White House will work best for the people. On another front, about 700,000 gang members around the country have disenfranchised themselves from gang activities and pledged to help their community in any way possible. The news lady seemed to be ending her broadcast when she touched her earpiece. She had one more announcement. Hundreds of criminals and sex offenders have turned themselves in for prosecution. Cynthia turned to him and said, Wow, I don't know what happened but it's like the devil is on holiday. He smiled and kissed his mom's forehead. Yes, mom the devil is on vacation. Hey little boy, if you remove the talisman, I will give you anything you want. Do you like candy? That's silly, yes you like candy. Plus, that sounds a little creepy. Would you like to see your dad again? He is in here with me. Max stood there in silence as the angel spoke to him in his dad's voice. It would take more than a simple trick to fool Max. He missed his dad, but he understood who the talisman had captured. It was the devil. Yes, I hear my father's voice. And now I know this devil is a liar, said Max. No, I am not the devil. Is that what you think? I'm Reynard, a dark angel. We, dark angels, were left in charge of this world. I haven't nor any other dark angels seen the devil in thousands of years. Think, kid. When has anyone seen God? That's the last time we have seen the devil. 
This world is on autopilot. With the right humans in control, all we do is sit back and let it ride. Sure, once in a while, good people stand up, but we just stroke the flame, and everything is back on track again. Okay, I may be monologuing a little bit, but if I'm trapped in this corner, the world may reset itself, but nothing I can't fix, in a day," said the Dark Angel. Max remembered that his dad had given him a small phone book of people to call if he needed unusual help. At the top of the list was a name, Mr. Beshaduho. He called Mr. Beshaduho and told him what had happened. He told Max it would take him a couple of days to get to him, but to hold firm and try to keep his mom from coming downstairs. When Max walked back into the main room, he noticed the section holding the angel was becoming increasingly darker by the hour. Kid, where have you been? I know, you call for help. The only help you need is right here in this room. Let me out, and I will give you the world. If I have to break out, it's going to be bad for you and your mother. I'm a simple man. I feel eat and take bathroom breaks. I need to go to the bathroom right now. You are no man, said Max. You said, you are Reynard. I Google searched you, and what I found is not good. I should be afraid of you. But I'm more afraid for mankind if I free you. Here is what I know as a kid. Congress has decided to dismantle. Racist groups have given up all plans and vowed to join the world in peace. Religion and hate have ended, as we know it. There hasn't been a reported death, caused by violence, not a single murder anywhere in the world. There have been mass burnings of weapons and drugs, by ordinary people. Every superpower on the planet has solved world hunger with a stroke of a pen. I believe I know who you are. You are not just a dark angel of death. You are the king of all that they are. You might as well be the devil himself. I'm never going to let you out of the corner," said Max. At that moment a thick black smoke rolled from beneath the staircase until it engulfed the entire room. A strong wind blew Max to the opposite side of the room, with each gust of wind, Max could hear wings flapping. The only visible thing in the room was Max and his life-size toy soldier standing straight and looking forward toward the wall. His vision was sharper than he had ever known. Max walked toward his sofa. The first step felt weird, like he was walking on cornflakes. He looked down at his feet and the floor was covered with Egyptian beetles. There were hundreds of them, covering all the furniture, floor, wall and ceiling. Max looked up at the ceiling and the beetles were crawling over each other, forming a layer, two inch thick. From the corner of Max's eyes, he thought he seen a man step out of the darkness. The ceiling seemed to close in on Max as the layer of beetles grew by the seconds. Suddenly, everything was moving in slow motion. Beetles were dropping from the ceiling in layers. Time had slowed down so much that Max could see their little legs moving about, searching for solid ground. It reminded him of a movie where he seen a man fall from a 20-story building. How the man's hands and legs looked like he was dog paddling with no water to swim in. Without warning, time sped up. All those beetles was falling, like a ton of bricks. One of the toy soldiers had thrown its Roman shield over Max's head. Another talisman that laid on the floor was spinning and pulling the beetles into its spin, like a sinkhole. Ten minutes later, Max woke up. There was no smoke or beetles. How did you sleep, Max? That was some dream you were having. Okay, kid, it's time to get real. Let me out. I have things to do," said Reynard. You're not the first human to trap me. I wouldn't call it trapped because I always get out. I will burn this house down around this corner and I will do it when I know that you and your mom are in a deep sleep. When someone notices that this is the only wall standing, they will come over to check it out. 
Trust this, when that person sees the talisman attacked to the single wall standing. What do you think that poor soul will do? They will remove it and put it in their pocket. I will walk past them like a ghost. But not before I collect their souls for hell and the talisman. Max thought, that does sound like a doable plan. Max knew the dark angel couldn't destroy the real painting of Jesus. He quickly got the painting from the safe and hung it on the wall. Checkmate little man on hanging the painting. Your father and Mr. Beshaduho has truly prepared you for my visit. But I will still win. I see you read that book your dad told you not to read into you were in your twenties. The one written by the Reynard, captured in 1347. When he was finally freed from imprisonment, he got a lot of stitches for writing that book. You know what they say, snitches get stitches, said the dark angel. Max could feel the room shaking. He knew he was on the right track. Max pulled the second talisman from the box. He laid it on an old dusty book with writings and words he couldn't read. The talisman began to pull the darkness from the corner. After the darkness was gone, there stood a man. No horns coming from his head or spiked teeth, just a man. He smiled at Max. Max could hear the last words of the dark angel, well played Max, well played. Two days later Mr. Beshaduho met Max at school and they headed to Max's house. They arrived to found Max's mom in the basement, sitting on the sofa. She was blindly staring at the wall. Reynard and the talisman was gone. She had not noticed her son or the stranger standing in front of her until Max called her name. Mr. Beshaduho needed the talisman to lock the dark angel inside with the rest of God throwaways. Cynthia told Max and Mr. Beshaduho that he looked like an ordinary man. He stood upright, tall, slim, and had a pleasant smile. She recalled his smile as he turned away from her and headed up the stairs. He waved goodbye too. Cynthia told them that she had come downstairs to find Max's toys laying all over the place. When she started to pick up the toys, she noticed that the corner under the stairs was really dark. I could swear I heard an animal in that corner. The darkness cleared and a man stood there. I was startled and dropped the toys and fell back onto the sofa. It felt like I was pushed. At first it looked like something, I don't know, something weird, but it was just a man. Cynthia turned toward Max, dropped to her knees. She gripped both of his arms, as to make sure he couldn't run. She looked Max in the eyes and told him that the man said to tell him that he enjoyed the game. He also told her to tell Max that he will not seek revenge. He said that the world is too interesting with him in it. Reynard asked Cynthia what did she do with the other items. She told him they were at the church in a surprise box. The dark angel laughed out of control as he walked up the stairs to freedom. That Sunday, all hell broke out. I hope you liked Reynard, the dark angel. Please subscribe and hit the notification button. Please share the story in YouTube channel with a friend or someone who likes to be scared. Thanks Henry Hicks.